Take it away, Calm. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of CastPod. Today, we're going to learn y'all something. We decided it's time that we... Learn how take... to make elephant toothpaste. Yes. <laughs> we Can we do that? Learn how to make elephant toothpaste. Can we do that in um, a video? I'm short on elephants currently, Dang. but... <laughs> I'm willing to give it a shot. Are there any vegan elephant options? Um. No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so Elephants anyway. are known carnivores. Oh, dang it. Well, I always, you know, I always had some sus on Dumbo. They they have those massive canines that literally stick out of their mouth. He was eyeing those crows a little too much, if you ask me. Yeah, but he could have been sus because they're wildly racist. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. If he ate the crows, then I, I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with that. Yeah. Nobody would. But no, today we are going to learn you how to have a successful first date. Because you know Kevin and I. A couple yes. of romance gurus over here. In college, I used to refer to myself as the goddess of love. Because honestly... If anybody had troubles, they'd come to me, because I know. <laughs> that, Am I right? <laughs> and freshman year of college, everybody was swooning over Callum. Got that right. And, uh, and I will have that written on my tombstone, that's for sure. <laughs> and let me tell you, they all came to me, and I told them all the same exact thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's entirely fair, because when you went missing... That's exactly what I said. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there, it was, it was funny back in freshman year of college because they were just like, Kevin, I know we barely know each other, but you're friends with Calum, right? And I just go, yes. And it's yes. like, what does he look for in a girl? <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> it's like I don't know. He probably looks with his eyes. <laughs> That's exactly what I would expect you to say. <laughs> and at that point, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much all I was looking for. And, somebody who I could see with my eyes. And then, I don't know if we talked about it, but mm. me going missing for a month in college because ah, yeah. I was sickly and hospitalized. The amount of people that came up to me afterwards and they were just like, like, what happened? I'm like, oh, you know, this, this, and this. And then they're like, yeah, did you talk to Callum at all? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, did you talk about what was going on? And I'm like, no, because why would I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were just like, he has not said one thing of concern about you. Are you sure here, guys? Like, they thought you were a <laughs> terrible friend. <laughs> and then I'm like, why? And he's like, he's like, he just goes, yeah, he does this all the time. And then I go, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he does this all the time. I do it all the time. I mean, yeah, people are like, do you do you know what's up with Kevin? I was like, oh, uh, you know, it's something. <laughs> like, well, have, have you, like, checked on him to see if he's all right? I was like, um, no. No. <laughs> like, what's, I mean, what's, what's up with him? Like, I did it last year, you know. I don't know. He's up to something. You know, he's doing and his then thing. That was that. They were like, "Are you gonna? Are you like worried?" And I was like, "No, I'll be back." He was back last time. <laughs> he hasn't gone missing forever <laughs> since. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> chances are he'll be back. You were thought to be such the biggest jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It was hilarious. I mean, they said it directly to me. They're like, "You're not a good friend. You don't know. You don't know what's going on." And I'm like, "Well, I don't really feel like asking personally, but." I mean, I thought it was pardon funny. me. But anyways, yes. Um, I have a list here. All right. 13 first date conversation starters. So you know that Callum is a master dater. This is true. This is what they say about me. Um, and also, you know, that time of year. Well, normally it would be. Or is it like mm -hmm. fall? It's going to... When people start getting into like relationships. I would say it's typically fall, but that's also because it lines up with like the well, beginning then I guess of the school year. year isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's also so, almost yeah. November, Callum. This is true, and that's 
where a lot of people run into trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, at least if you celebrate, that is the big triple N. <laughs> but we're not going to worry about that right now because we got at least a day. So let's... We have almost exactly 24 hours. It is 11.59. Even though people aren't going to hear this in time, mm -hmm. um, I hope you're enjoying yourselves today. Because it's going to be a rough month. It's going to be a long it's one. It's going to be a long one. That's what she said. Um, nice. But yeah. Speaking of this upcoming month, before we get into these topics. Sure. Callum, what is, what is going to happen on Friday? This also, Friday. happy Halloween. It's technically Halloween now. Oh, true. It is Halloween right now. Oh, yeah. Like, right on Halloween. Happy Halloween. Spooky. Spooky scary skeletons. It's interesting seeing mm. all how off some of my clocks are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Is it? laughs> okay. Friday. This Friday, get ready for a roller coaster of events. Actually, it's just one event. We're uploading yeah. a new type of video to the channel, and it's gonna be alternating weeks <gasps> of different videos. So I think we mentioned in the last one we are gonna be starting to do uh, this kind of bit called cast pod conservation because it is a topic that we are both very familiar with um and we enjoy talking about it. i think we can talk quite a bit about it yeah so it's one of those things where it's like i feel we feel like we could talk so much about it mm -hmm. that we're just making it its own show yeah that way and then, there will be some bits and pieces of con conservation in the normal cast pods but if you're looking for just that strict stuff, that's going to be mostly cast by conservation. Yeah, we'll get into some more complicated or topics um, and just kind of deeper into certain aspects of conservation. Mm -hmm. um, which, if you're interested in that stuff, then definitely check it out. And if you're not super into it, but maybe want to learn a little bit about like uh, kind of big issues that maybe you don't hear about as much yeah. in the news or something then things check relating it out and to hear, like hear the what's environment going on in the world yeah cuz cuz there's a lot of stuff that like you know obviously there's a big mm -hmm. push nowadays to talk about the environment yeah. and uh climate change and all that but i feel like it's very base level knowledge for like the general public they don't really know like a lot of the specifics that are going on in yeah. the world like very very focused projects that are uh, kind of a big deal. And also, there will be, at some point in time, some live, like, in-person videos as well. Because yeah. we've got a lot of pets and a lot to talk about with things. <laughs> this is true. And lots of examples. I see two dangerous murderers from where I'm currently <laughs> sitting. The deadliest creatures on the planet. Yep. Carmilla... And Fro, my white street frog. <laughs> <laughs> he is, if he was bigger, he'd be a devourer of worlds. She's a chunky she... girl. <laughs> I was like, hey, do you think you would? she would be able to eat a pinky? And Molly goes, I don't know. <laughs> and I put the pinky in, I blink, and then there's no signs of the pinky whatsoever. <laughs> Dang. And for people who don't know, that is not Kevin's finger, but that is a small mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. Um, yeah, I lost that at a different time. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin has four fingers on each hand. You just can't resist giving them to the frogs. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be doing that on Fridays, uh, alternating that with some conspiracy videos as well. That's those are just right. fun. We... Um, and yeah. Cast pod conspiracy. So instead of seeing multiple cast pod episodes about conspiracy theories and trying to jam as many as we can can in there in one, we're gonna have it's gonna have its own show too. Yeah, where we're gonna we did we did try to mention like a bunch of them in one um, episode. Yeah, but I think a lot of them definitely deserve their own thing. Yep, and we're gonna really deep dive into that one. And oh yeah enter so many rabbit holes it's not going to be funny i'm excited <laughs> uh anything else 
Um, and then also we have a new idea that uh, we're yeah, not yeah. gonna. We're just gonna put it out there in the universe. Um, mm -hmm. Not really get too too into details of it, but we're gonna have a cooking show. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. If you've listened to all these episodes, why would I list, watch a cooking show with you two? <laughs> and you would know <laughs> how bad it would be based off you're of right. every other episode you heard. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think <laughs> we're going to end up doing a lot of a lot more live actiony stuff. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of a lot of new and exciting content and I think it'll be enjoyable for people. Yep. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so look forward to it. But for now, look forward to getting a little closer with one another. Because step one is to start by trying to make a connection. Okay. So. I put my red piece in the middle right circle. Hmm. That's right. Connect four. I got it. <laughs> I just like how you're doing mental connect for. There's mental chess. Yeah, I would say, you know how there's people that play mental chess? <laughs> I mean, uh, more complicated, honestly, mental connect for. Oh, think. yeah. Because you got to If you play mental chess, people. you're someone that plays an obnoxious amount of chess. If you're playing a mental connect for, you're insane. I think you're just on a whole other level of intellect at that point. Uh, so let's see what this is. Though you and your date may already overlap in areas like education or religion, it's vital to build a report. Spell that one. Hmm. <laughs> report. So what would we report? R-A-P-P-O-R-T. Report on other topics, too. Like a repertoire? Sure. I don't know. I actually, I've I've heard of that word before, but I'm not entirely sure what it is. To build a report. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Build like a, let's just say build a connection. Yeah. Um, and that's from relationship expert and sociologist Dr. Jess Carbino, trying to draw parallels between their experiences and interests and your own. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, okay. It also says this lady. Um, leads research for bumble and tinder really yeah so they know what they're talking about she knows definitely what you're talking she's talking about so All yeah right. step one build a connection so tell, tell them if yes. you could because you're currently single yes so slide into those dms ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> we don't discriminate that's true um if you wanted somebody to make one connection with you, yeah. like, you could have, there's like a room of people, like speed dating style, and it's like, there was one topic that you would have to agree on. What would yeah. it be f to guarantee a date? I think if they were able to, um, quote SpongeBob and say, you know, like, it's like we're brothers, only closer, and they lift up their shirt, and I'm physically connected to them. I would, I'd probably have to continue seeing them. So, Almost entirely because we're physically connected. Yeah. So, like, if I just, a lady walks up to you in a bar. She stays okay. six feet away because of social distancing. Right, good. And she just goes, still no pickles? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm yours. At that point. Um, but a slightly more serious answer, let me think. I don't know. I I usually would say I think like it's 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 weird to say because I normally don't think about it because I normally I'd usually like if I gain interest in someone we've been friends for like a while so yeah. like I already know them pretty well. Um, so if we have, like, differing views on, like, politics, mm -hmm. that'd be a big no-no. Um, 
But I think just showing interest in, like, what I do, really, like with the animal stuff, that would be probably, like, number one. Even if they're not, like, super into animals, mm -hmm. it would just be, like, have some sort of, like, interest. Like, if there, if there was somebody who, like, hated snakes, it's like, well, obviously not, you know. But if they're like, oh, those are cool. Or if they just, like, remember weird facts that I say. That's always a big one. Okay. So yeah, if we connect on on uh, interest with animals, I'd say. But don't like be annoying about it, because mm -hmm. there are plenty of annoying animal people. We'll talk about that on conservation. Oh yeah. Next step. Also, I'm going to apologize for any crunching sounds in the background. I don't know how sensitive my new mic is on. OBS, mm -hmm. so I'm also eating Cocoa Puffs, because oh, nice. I never got to finish my Cocoa Puffs before we started, because we were trying to think of something to do. Well, Kevin, I'll turn it back on you. Yes. As a person in a relationship, what was the connection, or what was a connection, so, um, that got you in your current relationship? Okay, in my current one. I was yes. going to say, my past one's first relationship you were definitely involved in that i was the connection <laughs> um i would say i'm gonna speak for more of because we're currently three years and almost three years and two months in mm -hmm. we've had hair tie limp um <laughs> okay don't mind yeah no it's... don't mind if i do <laughs> Me yelling at the cats sporadically. <laughs> nice. um, something that we definitely keep trying to talk about is just we keep talking about different things. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of things that we're like that are constantly happening and updating and stuff that we're both passionate about. So like Molly absolutely loves Crested Geckos. So right. she'll always be looking at different breeders going which one look at this one look at this one and it's like i'm not as interested in it as that her but also mm -hmm. i'm not gonna be like like i still think that some look cool some don't yeah and then it's kind of like a the the back and forth of the crazy banter like when i'm talking about professional wrestling or when I walk into the bedroom at like three in the morning and my hair's all over the place and I just go, so let's talk about Moss for a second. And she's half asleep. Like what kind of cocaine have you just done? <laughs> I think that's just, I think that keeps things like consistent, but also it's like, so just we're still talking about, talk about anything yeah. basically. Yeah. No, I get that. There's always something that, or there's most of the time something interested that yeah. one of us is in to talk about. So it's like, we do sit in like silence when we're like watching videos and stuff together. But, but it's, it's also not like, like there's certain things that like you or her like that the other is just like not at all willing to. I mean, there's a couple of things, mm -hmm. but it's also like, it's at least you It'll be entertained from both yeah. sides. But it's not like you only ever talk about football and she only yeah. ever talks about clothes. You know, like a yeah, classic. It's, it's not the 1950s. <laughs> married couple thing. Yeah. I get that. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. Build on what you already know. Expand upon what you've learned from the initial source of connection to propel the dialogue. For example, if you match online, refer to something in their dating profile and ask them a question about the topic. So this is something that I used to do on dating apps because, well, first, I could probably do a whole rant on dating apps and how much they suck, but I... when I was having fun on them was when I would find something in somebody's profile that I could make a joke out of as, like, a first introduction. Because that was that's mm -hmm. what I always went for. Was I was like, what what out of this can I make a funny? 
Um, You're in it for the the bands. Yeah, no, it was all just a practice for my stand-up comedy career. I'm not actually interested in anyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> now you see something. <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe in your stand-up comedy career. Thank you. I'm more of a sit-down comedian myself. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's, but, I mean... Yeah. I, <laughs> just... How can I compete with that? You can't, because I built on that connection of stand-up comedy. Oh my god, he's doing it right now. This is a very successful first date, I gotta say. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's like step one: find something to talk about. Step two: talk about it. Yeah. So if you're like, "Hey, you have hair," I too have hair. <laughs> That's crazy. Did you grow it yourself? <laughs> so did I. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. What now? <laughs> oh, is that a wig? Um. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And then build on what you know. You know that they're secretly bald. They're probably Caillou in disguise. Why is that and your first th thought? <laughs> Start talking about that. I mean, I don't know. What else could it be? Witness protection. Shoot. <laughs> Gets me every time. <laughs> I feel like that's not exactly, like, the clear different differential. It's like... Oh yeah, they're probably Caillou in disguise. It's like, don't be stupid. No, they're in the witness protection <laughs> program. You make a good There's point. So many other reasons to wear a wig. <laughs> Step one: no. Halloween costume. No, I don't think so. Oh, that's true. If you go on a first date in Halloween, make sure they're not wearing a wig. So yank or a mask as soon as you see. It. <laughs> or a mask. So really, be sure to just grab at their face and hope for the best. I think we're really building on something here. Oh, yeah. And you know what happens next? Bats. You state the obvious. You are Caillou in disguise. <laughs> you call an if emergency meeting of up to <laughs> your the ten closest people to you. I guess the eight closest people to you, including you two, or not including you two. And you say, orange is sus, their hair is fake. Yep. Sorry to That's... anyone who wears a wig. Also, just with the state of America and opinions of the president, that sounded so political. It's actually, that's really funny. <laughs> it's really... Oh, we said we weren't going to get political literally right before this, and I it's... accidentally made it political. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, what the fudge? Oh, I just got a message. Ooh, um, is it somebody sliding into those DMs? No, it's just on Discord. I don't know why I'm suddenly getting messages from the other chat. But anyways, They're talking. Uh, um, so ooh, yeah, apparently Brian killed... I'm assuming Brian killed Michelle. I think so, from what I could read from that. Hmm. If you're not sure how to jump into a conversation, comment about something in your environment. For starters, you could ask them if they've ever been to the coffee shop, park, or wherever <laughs> they propose to meet. <laughs> So, Calum, let's say we're meeting at, like, let's, like, go back a little bit. So, like, your so last your relationship, <laughs> I was going to say, your last relationship, we were in college. And it was yes. our junior year, correct? Yes. <laughs> so, just go, so, you've um, been here before? <laughs> Literally sitting in my bedroom. Come here often? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I That's say that, I say that. All the time in our own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I love saying that. I'll, I'll be like waking up in the morning and like Molly will be making coffee and I'll like, I'll be opening up the fridge and they're right next to each other. <laughs> and I'll just go, so um, how's it going? Come here often? And... My favorite is to do that in places where I know that the person <laughs> isn't going often. Like if it's the first time the person and I are at a place and say, you are Austin? They're like, no, first time. Oh. It's like, oh, cool, me too. <laughs> Anyways. I'll also, with small talk, my favorite is at work. <laughs> I'll just, Thursdays is when we get a lot of shipment in. 
Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'll just walk up to my boss and go, so um, getting ready for the weekend. (laughs) And it's gotten to a point where that's become a meme (laughs) in my workplace of (laughs) specific, like saying getting ready for the weekend or or specifically me. So like she'll have like a three day weekend or something like that just happens to line up like that. And I'll walk Mm -hmm. up there and I'll be like, so like it's like her last shift before and i just go so getting ready for the weekend and she'll just be like oh my god i am getting ready for the weekend <laughs> <laughs> that and on mondays i'll just go mondays am i right and if it's like last monday where it's just a gross day and mm-hmm. nothing crazy and my boss will go yeah mondays <laughs> And then I'll just switch it around, and I'll be like on a Tuesday, so getting ready for the weekend. And it's just like, no, no, you just had your days off. You... I think if I worked in retail, I would do the same thing, but it's like to customers. Like on a Monday, I would say Mondays, am I right, to every single person I talk to. Not every single person, but I have oh, I would done do it that to everyone. multiple Even times. Even if I see them twice in a day. It's like, Mondays, am I right? Like you already... I already said that. Yeah. So, like, uh, this last Monday Mondays. was a very gross Monday. <laughs> and somebody was like, oh, it's just the weather. <laughs> and I just go, Monday is summer, right? And they're like, yeah, it's not that kind of day. And then I'm just like, oh, my God, the banter's working. It's such a terrible conversation. <laughs> it's... I feel like stating the obvious is actually, like, the worst uh, thing to do on a first date. I will say, oh, yeah, on a first date, definitely. But in retail, stating the obvious has led to some fun conversations. I believe it. I, I feel like we'll need another Tales of Retail. Oh, oh Retails too. the retailing. There we got the episode. Got it's the ready. name. Somebody remind me when we record that episode. Um, what I think of when I read this, um, state the obvious, is I think of a bit from Game Grumps where... <laughs> they're talking about like being at a party or something and being socially awkward and it's just like constantly complimenting people's coats <laughs> where they're like <laughs> they say they're in a conversation with somebody that they don't really know mm-hmm. and they're like hey, oh yeah i don't know what to say so i just keep going uh-huh uh-huh, uh-huh. i've actually been watching a lot of game rums recently have you mm-hmm I'm a big fan. I've been watching a lot of their like ten minute power hours and stuff, and I watched their oh, party. Great. Their party cards. Yep. yep. <laughs> they're just like, it's like, cool. Um, like they're getting flirty with someone. It's just like, yeah, go talk to Frank. And then it's like, Frank, how's it going, dude? We need to. We need you to do this. <laughs> I love those ones. Um, but they're they're just saying how like, if you don't know what to say, just compliment somebody's coat. <laughs> So they're like, uh-huh, 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 that's a nice coat, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, <laughs> to every person that they see, and then they're just like, do you, do you know where the coat room is? I've seen some really nice coats. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? I would do exactly the same. Ugh. But, yeah, I I think on that one, maybe just skip that. Maybe don't compliment their coat. Maybe just find something else to talk about. Unless if you really example, like their coat. I mean, if they have a really nice coat, you gotta tell them it's a nice coat. Mm-hmm. But this next step is actually what not to do, speaking of which. And that's don't ask them what they do for a living. Really? Yeah. It says, a first date is all about showing interest. Dr. Jane Greer, marriage and family therapist and author of What About Me? Stop Selfishness from <laughs> Ruining Your Relationship. Instead of asking a typical, what do you do? Frame the query in an open-ended way. Greer suggests trying the following. How did you decide to go into this line of work? When did you know this was what you wanted to do? Another way to approach this topic. Is there anyone who inspired you to pursue your career or stick it out? Though you may have faced challenges, if so, what's the story there? So this isn't like a don't talk about something basic that most people do which is have a job this is take this short sentence Mm -hmm. and reach the four page minimum (laughs) it's make it more interesting 
but at the same time it's like it's a hard thing to avoid yeah because it's like it's such a it's something that can lead to a lot of conversations so many conversations but i can see where it also kills a conversation because I, yeah. I was actually talking about this with my parents the other day and they were saying how like same thing if they're at like a place they don't know many people there's only like so many questions you can ask them and if it's not like clicking then it's like well whatever and one of them is you know like well what do you do and then you say what you do and it's like ah oh, nice yeah i feel and like that's, that's it <laughs> but i also feel like it's not like the the question itself of what do you do it's also like the follow-up you know it really is more dependent because on what the other person says yeah like if they if they want to talk about it or not yeah like calm what did what did you have for dinner today um i made some pasta from egg noodles and then i just had butter and salt on them because i was gonna make bacon but there was no bacon that was uh not frozen except for this little bacon that i started to pull out <clears throat> but then i realized it was my sister's turkey bacon and it tastes kind of weird so i didn't have that that's nice See, it could be anything. <laughs> You're right. You're and right. Then, oh, I, even I tried could also... to make it more interesting. <laughs> and it didn't work. And then I could, I or I could go like on the lines of, why does your sister have turkey bacon? I honestly have no idea, <laughs> because we have two different types of bacon in this house other than turkey bacon, and they're both <laughs> delicious. So like, okay, why even? I think it's supposed to be healthier or something. But I mean, like, Ooh. come on, right? No, bacon, the purpose of bacon is just not being healthy. No, it's just supposed to be good. Also, if you're getting ready for uh, ca the, the our weekend. cooking show, <laughs> nice, our <laughs> cooking show, Callum's going to make us some buttered noodles at some point in time. That's true. It's one of the few things I know how to make. Now, before this goes further, can we get you to commit to taking at least one bite of everything I make? Yes. Yes. I will commit to that. Yes, that's all I wanted. All right, continue. <laughs> um, yeah, it really depends on, like, the, you know, if that person says what they do, you have to think of something to follow it up with. You yeah. can't just say, like, cool. Or There's got to be he's something you can do with it. One of my favorite Calum Devaney, um, I'm going to end this conversation right now of topics. Right. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I do like saying that. <laughs> there's been multiple stories I've been told over the years where it's like a girl's show an interest in Calum and Calum's not interested in her. And they'll just go, just like, oh, it's like, I did this. What do you think, Calum? And he just goes, neat. <laughs> <laughs> Says nothing else. I actually can't think of a specific time right now, but I, I do enjoy saying that. I'll, <laughs> I can... I'll text you one, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not one to say over the podcast. Oh, no, I won't. I'm just I'm curious. Because I, I know I've said it. I just can't think of like a specific one right now. Um, so, yeah, I don't know about that one. I'd say you could probably ask them. And then, I guess, like it said, make it slightly more interesting than, so what do you do? Because that's, if you say it exactly like that, it is kind of like... It is a little I don't bit. Know what to say? It's a little bit of like a stopping yeah. point. It's like, like if you're keeping like the conversation very minimal, it's like, what do you do? I do this. Neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like you gotta. I don't know. If if you reach that point where you don't know what else to say and say, so what do you do? It's probably already falling off. Maybe you'll be able to save it, but. I don't know. Let's move on to the next one. Pay attention to how often they ask you questions. To determine if a person of interest is relational or self-centered, note if they inquire about you at all. Um, when you answer, do they immediately turn into talking about themselves, or can they stay on you for any time at all? Okay, so this is like... This is weird inverse of the last one, where it's like... The last one is how to approach a question. This is yes. how to respond. True. Also, I feel like I keep getting 
I'm getting mixed messages from this article of like, you should, uh oh, I just made eye contact with my cat pooping. Um, <laughs> little known fact about my setup, it faces directly at the litter box. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I got derailed. Um, there's, <laughs> <laughs> understandable. There's some of these topics that are just like, talk about yourself and then mm -hmm. some are like no let the other person talk about themselves don't hold the conversation but listen to how many questions they ask you it's like how selfish am i supposed to be right now yeah i will say it's um it is important to keep track of that like if they're asking you anything at all or if like like if you're trying to keep the conversation going like you ask them a question and they just respond and it's just you asking the questions over and over and over, then like, that's probably not going anywhere. Um, and same thing on the other side, if you're just like responding to them, that would probably be a good sign to say like, Oh, this person, or I'm not interested in this person. So like, I'm not trying to continue this conversation. Um, but when it comes to talking about like yourself, um, I have an interesting point to make about this where I know if I'm talking to somebody about something, if they like, if they say something about themselves, right. Or something about like that's going on in their life. Sometimes I will ask them about it more, but sometimes I also will relate it back to myself. And some people like this guy is saying, take it as like a selfish thing. Like they're all like, this person's only talking about themselves if they keep relating it back to themselves, but I see it more as like, a, oh, I can relate to that, and this is how. So I understand, like, how you feel, or, you know, I understand the situation, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. hmm. But I can see how that is also taken as like, a, oh, this person's selfish. They only, they you know, only talk I about try it. to talk about this thing, but they make it about themselves. It's yeah. like, no, I just, I wanted to, you know, show empathy. <gasps> no. You know, you're not allowed. Just be interested in my thing, in my thing only. Uh, I've I've known a couple of people like that in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely there definitely are people who are just self-centered and they're like all about me. But you no, know, I think you can also kind of use it as like a hey, I get that. You know, I relate to that. Building mm -hmm. a connection, if you will. <gasps> yeah. And building off of what you know. The more you know. But yeah, so there's that. So basically, ask good questions and Here's respond appropriately. Yeah. That's all you need. Uh, next. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Seems pretty obvious. Listen closely to their answers. A person's responses can often show their true selves. For example, if you ask how long they've been on a dating site and what their experience has been, are they saying belittling things like there are so many idiots out here or are they more level-headed responses like i've met some nice people and had some good experiences there's and of a, course some that weren't there's only a handful of idiots here i've met quite a few idiots can't tell if you're one yet but we'll see <laughs> that's, I think that's a good way now that's a response <laughs> that, that really puts you on your toes you know that's that's how you put someone on notice. <laughs> like, I'm watching you. I'm judging you. Better make a good impression. Build some connections here. Mm -hmm. I think that's it's pretty straightforward there, right? Listen to their responses, um, and see how they respond. It's like it's pretty obvious. Mhm. Mm You're so like. Callum, if I were to ask you, what is better for your body to eat? A salad or 30 pounds of lead? What would your response be? It's got to be lead, I'd uh, say. Because lead rhymes with bread. Mm -hmm. um, and bread tastes good. Okay. But lead also is like lead they're spelled the same okay and i think lead is leading me 
to a life a life of health and fitness and also bread and that is my final answer vegetables are yucky see ladies that's a man you want to find also vegetables are expensive too yeah they now put 30 pounds of lead 30 pounds of lead it's expensive but boy howdy can you sell it back that's right you've got a pencil business in the making well if they made lead pencils anymore (laughs) yeah it's it's graphite now Uh, 30 pounds of graphite (laughs) would be better than the two i'd say hold on Okay. You get to the next topic. I'm gonna see how much does graphic, graphic, graphite weigh <laughs> compared to lead. You do that. The next section is ask them about their talents. Ask, what are you really good at? What do you do to keep growing in? Insert area you're discussing. Listen for aspects of the conversation that lets you see how much responsibility they take for life. Do they see themselves as someone who's creating their own life? Or waiting for it to just show up. Okay, so I think that ended up being a different thing at the end from where it started. Just kind of weird. No. Like, is this just? Oh, uh, quick question. Mm-hmm. While I'm looking to the graphite. Right. Yes. Um. Does. Is this just an article like that lists certain? things that have like certain authors like different authors or is it just yes okay that was that was it yeah no this is this is like a collection of different things that different doctors of whatever have said at some point um so for this one in particular when it said ask about their talents i was thinking like can they put their foot behind their head (laughs) and then it ended up being like how motivated are they in life? And that's really just not where I expected that to go. So I thought it would be like, hey, what are some of your talents? Oh, I play the sousaphone. It's like, wow, neat. You are very good at lifting heavy objects. Um, but then it was like, you know, are they a go-getter at work? It's like, that's <laughs> not a talent. It's just a thing. I'm not interested in that at all. I just want to know if you are capable of juggling. Have you learned your juggle. weight thing yet? Yeah. So graphite is just... um, What's it called? Just carbon laid out a specific way. Right. And lead is lead. So... Uh-huh. The weight of carbon... Like for per molecule, so the atomic weight of carbon is about twelve, correct? Yes. And lead is two oh seven, so you can. Mm-hmm. So carbon weighs about five percent of what lead does. Well, why don't we just look at it this way, in like a simpler way than like atomic weights or whatever? What weighs more? 30 pounds of lead or 30 pounds of graphite hold on let me look it up what weighs and the first things and... that pop up under what weighs more is muscle or fat followed by <laughs> sand or water <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say about that I'm very curious. What does weigh more? <laughs> let's let's find out. Also, the answer is the lead weighs more. See, obviously, because a ton of bricks weighs more than a ton of feathers, as we all know. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> yep. No debate in that one. Can carry a ton of can carry a ton of bricks on a forklift. Can't carry a ton of feathers. There's too many for the forklift. I don't think anybody has ever made that argument, and I think you've just cracked the code. (laughs) That's the conspiracy. (laughs) (laughs) That will definitely be on there. Um, The next one is to learn about their family and friends. Begin with a simply phrased, tell me about your family. 
see what you learn. Even if it's a negative story, you can respond with, wow, that sounds hard. How did you deal with that or overcome it? Hear me out. Just okay. yes and. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's basically, you could have just written this whole article with that. Improv is the best way to do a first date. Yeah. So, let's see. Asking about, I mean, I ask you like every single time. Hey, Callum, how's the baby? This is true. Building a connection through family. Mm -hmm. And you always say, "Wow, that sounds hard." Yeah. How did you deal with that or overcome it? <laughs> and you go, "I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't acknowledge it." <laughs> This is true. Ah, All surprise, true. Um, I don't exactly like how that one line is worded. Uh, with the if it's a negative story, like to go deeper into it, like I feel like that's something, especially <laughs> on a first date, you should avoid. Like, imagine having a first date and the girl is just like, "Yeah, before this, I just found out my dog has cancer." Wow, that's hard. How do you deal with that? I don't know. I just, it just happened. We're freaking okay, out. Just, I'm crying. What do you, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> if you're just like, yeah, uh, my dad left when I was three. Um, and that, you know. How did you deal with that? my mom get into some pretty bad habits. And you're like, that's hard. <laughs> did you overcome it? No, it's actually severely messed up my relationships with my family and uh, friends. I, I have se <laughs> severe trust issues now, too. Wow, that's hard. <laughs> How do you deal with that? I, I'm not. I'm falling apart. <laughs> I have to wear this wig all the time because I'm in the witness protection program. Oh, Caillou, I knew it all along. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with being Caillou? You rake in the uh, money. Honestly, yeah. Child star. Child cartoon star. <laughs> Where are they now? All grown up. Can we do that? Let me add that to the list. Make an episode of... We'll just make... A, we'll get a list mm -hmm. of random cartoon characters. <laughs> and we'll do a... <laughs> Where we'll are just, they now? Yeah, we'll just do a Where are they now cartoon character edition. I like that. I mean, we already know for the Rugrats. Mm -hmm. They had a whole show about it. Yeah. They were all grown up. And then some artist on Tumblr like made them all like hipster adults. Oh. Yeah. I still watch the show. But yeah, that was a. Uh, it was rough. They made Dill really weird. He was super weird. <laughs> for like Did... no reason. No, they had a hint of a justification. Where Phil and Lil just go, maybe we shouldn't have dropped him on his head when he was a baby. Uh, <laughs> that was it. That's, that's all he said about it. <laughs> that's all that. That's all they had, and they're like, "Yeah, let's just make him super weird." But anyways, off topic. We got a few more here. All right. Uh, first, unpack their idea of a good life. We all have a concept of what our ideal life would be. For you, maybe it's owning a home having a healthy family, getting out of debt, or winning the next season of Big Brother. Okay. Is that a, what it actually says? Yeah, that's a bit of a left turn. Um, so. Oh, that's, all right, yeah, that's just, sorry, I was reading more into it. It's just really weird. Um, yeah, basically say, so how many kids do you want to have? Yes. How many babies would you like to poop out? <laughs> Would you like to move in to uh, a right. two bedroom, two bathroom house in the future after this first date? Have uh, 2.5 children and maybe even a dog. I'm also really trying to get out of debt. I have a lot, but if we're married, we can share that debt. Now, hang on. That's a strategy if you're the one in debt. <laughs> I'm also looking for a green card, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just, I want to get married to you now so there i was wearing a wig <laughs> <laughs> after i leave yeah. the witness protection program i hope to have a family they won't let me 
but you know we'll see how the court case against the mob goes <laughs> ever since what happened to the last one they said i'm not allowed to you know have a family but i think we can work things out right this is fine that seems like a bit of a stretch for the first date a little bit to be like you know where do you see yourself in 20 years married to me by the way like, I don't know. That just seems like maybe maybe just talk about like, uh, how about how about them sports? You know, mm -hmm. just like keep it simple at first. Don't need to get too deep with it. Although, I apparently would be terrible at first dates because the next topic is try a philosophical question. Our philosophy of life steers our values and is often the root of many choices a person makes. This person suggests tapping into your date's worldview with questions like, do they have a spiritual or moral center? A true north? Is it compatible with yours? On generosity of finances or time, do She's they gonna serve kick anywhere? Your ass. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, no. Um, Carmilla's, Carmilla's poking too close to Cleo's tank. And <laughs> Cleo's gonna just bamboozle her and so um get out of here i thought, I thought you're just super against the philosophical question. no I, you, there's the one correct answer and that is to ask how many four-year-olds they think they could fight at one time <laughs> there's one person tied on one track there are four people <laughs> tied on the other <laughs> so so for no. my i always ask in like my big icebreaker question is how many four-year-olds do you think you fight at one time it really shows the strength of somebody <laughs> it does Stop it does um but i i still like the idea of being on a first date and being like so do you have like a, a spiritual or moral center <laughs> you think like i'm gonna beat the crap out of <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, what a power move. <laughs> First date, threaten to beat up your date. Let's really is their dominance. <laughs> do they defend themselves, or do they leave? Find out, <laughs> really, Find out on the really second date. their fight or flight. <laughs> that's, how, that's how you build a connection. I'll tell you who I... We'll... We'll work on like a couple's dinner episode of the cooking, and then we'll give our own, <laughs> our own advice. We'll, we'll go through all these steps and see what, see what happens. <laughs> if it ends in a fist fight or not. You can just watch the snake, but she will. Oh my god. So yeah, get philosophical. Do they believe that uh, God can be uh, a woman? truly all-knowing and all-powerful does fate exist do we have true um decision making in our lives <laughs> things like that right. so quick update for you on the, sure. on the cat snake <laughs> right we have i'm gonna send you a snapshot of this we have carmilla staring at cleo who's staring back and then we have bean who's just watching this entire thing go down as she's going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> That's a renaissance painting if I've ever seen one. Uh, if I could get a renaissance painting of Bean, like Jesus on the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next step? The <laughs> next step? Yeah, I'm looking at the cat staring at him. Oh my god, Bean's so interested. She's like, what is going on here? Um, so the next one is address deal breakers, which I think is fair, but also, st I don't know fair. if I would do it on a first date, yeah. you know, yeah. I'll give you an example. So it wasn't the first date, I don't think, but it was early on, uh, when my dad and my mom started dating and my dad was like, so do you want kids? She was like, uh. I mean, uh, probably. And he's like, good, because 
I want to have kids. I'm getting older. <laughs> and my last marriage didn't work out. So. <laughs> so that was like, that was the deal breaker, whether or not the kids were an option. Yeah. I feel like that's, I feel like if it's not your first, like, I mean, like marriage or like something like r really long-term relationship, maybe. Yeah. Beat this cat up. She's just. She's gonna get herself killed by the snake one day. Um. So like, with like you really learn what you're looking for, if you have like a long term relationship and then it just fail like, it goes out, mm -hmm. and then it's like all right next time around what am i looking for and then it's yeah. just like all right i'm not gonna waste my time on people that don't like well, look for the same thing that you know not talking about surface level things like you have a preference for brunettes but some things that are just not negotiable like wanting to have kids or needing to live in a particular region if you're super religious and you know that's important to you for instance ask about that Anything you know that's a non-starter for you should be brought up early. So, mm -hmm. I think what I've said before is that one thing I'm not super into is smoking weed. Um, not that like I'm against it completely, but I probably wouldn't date somebody who does it purely because um, it becomes such a like... It's like a replacement for personality for a lot of people where it's like that's all they ever talk about or do and it's just kind of like it's really boring to me like the amount yeah. of times I'll, I'll see it on like a dating site where they're like i smoke and then like, that's, it. <laughs> that's like their entire yeah like bio and it's like okay do you do you do anything else like <laughs> it's just i don't know it it clues me into like okay this person doesn't know how to have fun basically <laughs> sorry to call out any stonies out there but like i don't know have other hobbies man that's all i ask um and then the other one would be uh in terms of cheating if i know the person has cheated on someone in the past i would not probably continue yeah because, in my opinion, other than, like, illegal stuff, cheating is, like, the worst thing you can do in a relationship. Yeah, there's... Molly and I have already had, like, multiple talks about it, where it's, like... Yeah. We both pretty much agree. If someone cheats on the other one, it's end of relationship. Yeah. No. I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything negotiable about it. Yeah. I mean, I have no plans to cheat on her. Right. And I mean, she already I, knows about Tom. Yeah, she knows about Tom. She knows about you. She knows about Logan. So we're fine. I was going to say, yeah. We're already good there. But, like, it's. I feel like that's just such a level of distrust. And the way that goes negatively is somebody goes, oh, but I can change them. Yeah, that does happen. And it's like, no. No. no, you probably won't. Because <laughs> I just, I don't know. If if you've done it once, I think that's kind of it. And yeah. apologies to anybody who's done it before. But I mean, like, you, you can never give a good reason for it. Even if the person you're in a relationship with kind of sucks, like, just end the relationship then. You know? Like, there's, there's no reason to continue it, but then just, like, pretend and meet with somebody on the side. Mm -hmm. There's no, like no reason to do that yeah um and then like i said earlier other deal breakers would probably be just like uh like political stuff like mm -hmm. if you don't believe in climate change or like i don't know if we if we just like very much i'm i'm fine with disagreeing on things yeah because i i actually do like being able to like debate it's... somebody um but if it's like kind of big deal stuff then it's like ah uh, yeah so like molly and i good. will disagree 
on things and it's just like simple little things we'll disagree on like what did you think of this movie what did you th- do you want to do this what yeah. is your pr- how about we go like this like and a lot of the time it goes one of two ways where it's like or i guess technically one of three ways where it's like either we compromise and do something like meet in the middle of it or if it's like something like uh or it's like what we'll just do it on our own it's like all right cool i'll watch this do this on my own have fun or option three is i pretend to throw the biggest hissy fit on the planet about it (laughs) which is just it's typically entertaining and fun and i'll just be like very aggressively agreeing with her she's like stop it this is (laughs) or i'll have the silliest reasons to be against it i'll just be like no why not because you're a girl and it's just like that's that's your argument yes um yeah, I think, I think the the big thing is, like, is it's got to be opinions, yeah. right? Things that are opinions, you can have different opinions on it, but when it's, like... You got to agree it's, if it's a fact of something. Yeah. It's a fact. If it gets into conspiracies versus facts, then it's a problem. Yeah. Um, How many more of these do we have? Because we're... I know, we're probably coming down to it. I will speed run these last ones. Speed run. So, we've got be a good journalist. Um, Well, I'm not, so I guess that's it. (laughs) It's the end of it. Uh, It says, an inherent trait of any effective reporter is inquisitiveness. Inquisitiveness. I just had a lisp there. The day isn't an interview. You are trying to learn parts of who this person is and their story. Do so by asking questions. Okay, so ask So ask more questions. (laughs) Great, thanks. Get creative. Check in with yourself as the date is progressing. Do you like being there? Is it... <laughs> Imagine just pausing mid-conversation, oh looking up to the ceiling. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just trying to decide if I like it here or, or not. <laughs> I was thinking more on the lines of like, so like, so you're out at like, like a bar with a girl on a first date and... You just go, like, saved by the bell style, time out, <laughs> and everybody around you freezes. Do I like being on this date? Uh, you know what? I hate it here. And then you just walk out. Yeah. Time in, and then you're just gone. So she'll just be standing there going, like, so it's like... What? She'll be just like, oh, okay, so that's when I joined the witness protection time out <laughs> and then time in program Cal <laughs> he's gone where did he go <laughs> they knew I said <laughs> they knew <laughs> and it's funny that you say that because the last one remember you can always leave <laughs> <laughs> so if you decide you know mid sentence you know what I actually, I'm just straight up <coughs> not having a good time. Just walk out. <laughs> Leave the bill to them and go home. And you know what? At least you were there in the first place. At least you tried yeah. it. Just shake their hand, say, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors, and walk away. Say, my people will contact your people. It's been a pleasure having you here. Um, Write them a thank you going... note. <laughs> A thing of going in a different direction. We've actually already hired somebody for this position, um, but we'd like to stay in touch regardless. All right. And there you go. That's your first date. When, when everything's back up and running, hopefully eventually, mm-hmm. we'll have you, Dan, and Danny all right. try three completely different tactics on how to hand like on how to like pick people up so like we'll have danny go like the super interested route mm-hmm. we'll have you address everything like a business meeting 
<laughs> and we'll have Dan just go something like completely off the rails. I, I would like, if I could take any of these points and use them for my own, it would be state the obvious and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the ultimate thing, treat it like an observational experiment. I'll have a notepad ready every time they say or do something. I'll write it down. I'm like, what are you <laughs> doing? I'm like, I'll oh, just just pretend like this is a natural environment and just continue writing things down. Oh no, I spilt my drink on your notebook. Now you have to stop writing on it. It's cool. It's the waterproof kind. <laughs> I was gonna say, you think I come unprepared with a non-waterproof notebook? That's how. It, yeah. Yep. And honestly, if anybody's skeptical of all the stuff we've said today, just know that this article on OprahMag.com, by the way, <laughs> um, the photo used in the beginning is that of Adam Sandler in Fifty First Dates, which is a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. So, And take it from Adam Sandler on First Dates. He's had at least 50 of them. That's true. And now you can yank me off the stage with a really long cane. So that's that's all I got. I, know, I this is purely audio. I don't know how we <laughs> don't know how we accomplish. It's crazy. That. I see the cane coming for me already. Just came through the front door. <gasps> but yeah, so uh, please try all of those at the same time. Um, obviously virtually. Yeah. Because of today's day and age. Hop on um, Omegle or Omegle <laughs> and just get ready to make your next oh relationship. God. And just see where it goes from there. Honestly, that would be a really funny video. Of trying <laughs> going on Omegle and trying first date tactics with just <laughs> random people. There's going to be a but so many do dudes. Because it's really gross. Yeah, like, there's going to be so <laughs> many dudes whacking it. That's true. So, I see that you enjoy uh, physical exercise of the wrists. Are you Caillou? <laughs> um, I can't. I can't touch you because you're on the other side of a computer. But can you adjust your hair for me? I need to see if it's. A wig. I'm just curious <laughs> about. Your ability to grow hair. I could have picked any bald character. <laughs> you picked Caillou. <laughs> I don't know why that was the first thing that stuck out in my head. I don't know. When you think of bald, who do you think of? Honestly, my first thought is typically Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Wow. I would not have. <laughs> would have never guessed that, would you? <laughs> I never would have said Bruce Willis. I would have said One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. I would have said The Rock. Yeah, he's the I would have said. Uh, who, Charles I Xavier. Person. I would have said Charles Xavier. That's true. Um, but yeah, no, I, Bruce Willis, wow. <laughs> I don't know why that's my first thought. <laughs> but yeah, it's Bruce Willis. All right. Well, I guess that about wraps it up. We yes, have it is. Um, made sure everybody listening to this now is in a relationship because you can't fail with these uh, suggestions. Nope. Congratulations. We cured being single. <laughs> we did it. Single is no more. Yep. Except and, for me. Yeah. But that's okay. Being single is neat that's a callback that is a callback all right Callum where where can they watch us where can they watch your <clears throat> tales the tales of dark souls all right so if you want to see more content obviously stay tuned to this channel because a lot more is going to be coming to it I have a twitch channel twitch.tv slash um, I also have a another YouTube channel just C&D Save the World, and 
a secret third channel, CastPod Games, uh, which hopefully we'll be getting some more content soon as well. Hopefully. Yeah, I have some ideas for that. Ooh. Um, <clears throat> I know, right? And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. How about you, sir? You can find me at twitch.tv slash ballyache. I've been mm-hmm. working on um, getting some stuff to stream. I think now that both Pokemon DLCs are out, I'm going to take some time and marathon Shield completely through. I've yeah. only played Sword to up, up until now, and we have both games. Nice. So I'm going to marathon Shield on stream. Uh, you can also find me on the CastPod channels as well as Unnamed Project Media. That yeah, is true. You can find both of us there. It's Most of it is a lot of me and our other friend Dan as of right now, but also we're, we're working out plans and trying to get more everybody involved with things. But, you know, quarantine. Yeah, it's tough. But yeah. stay tuned. Like I said, we got stuff coming in all sorts of places. Also, you can buy your very own CastPod merch. That's true. We have merch. Mm-hmm. That's literally like on the screen if you're watching this. And as of right now, the only way you can hear us is YouTube. So there you go. True. It's right there, on screen. Yeah, so click it. Click it. Click it. And you can subscribe, or you can like, or you can leave a comment. That's right. You can't do anything else. Don't no. even try it. No. Just Why? don't. That, clicking on that video is not going to work. Yes, we know you're tired of us talking, but that's not going to work. Actually, you know, it's a fun trick that I don't think many people know. What? If you click the subscribe button, it actually changes colors. Ah, uh, no way. Yeah, if you click it and it changes from gray to red, mm-hmm. isn't that crazy? Zany. I'll do it right now. Yeah, look at that. Wow. It is now red, and I no longer receive videos from this channel. <laughs> Wait. Who are we voting? <laughs> <laughs> I just opened up YouTube, and then it was like, so now there's going to be a quick second of, who are we voting for? All right, well, peace out. Bye.